Hi, my name is Joshua Wright Chisholm. I'm one of the PGY-5s here at Hospital for Special Surgery. And today we'll be demonstrating the volar henry approach for fixing distal radius fractures. So this is the workhorse approach for almost all distal radius fractures. And we'll start by first identifying our landmarks. So the distal aspect of our incision will be the wrist crease and the actual incision will overlie the flexi carpi radialis tendon. So you'll see two tendons right here that are clearly visible. This one right here, the more medial or ulnar one, is the palmaris longus tendon, and the more radial one is the flexor carpi or FCR tendon. So our incision is gonna start right here at the wrist crease, and it'll go about four to five centimeters, um, approximately uh, directly over the FCR tendon sheet. So we have our incision right here, and we'll also mark off where we plan to repair. And then we start with a 15 blade directly through skin and through dermis. So after making our incision, we'll be able to see the volar aspect of the FCR tendon sheath. We're going to cut directly down to there, and it is okay if occasionally you can see those shiny white fibers. It's okay if occasionally your blade dips into those fibers as long as you safely go in line with the fibers. So in the middle, we're all free. You then take the blunt edges of your sin retractor, and we'll start approximately just to make sure that we're all free, excuse me, distally. And then we retreat and approximately make sure that we're all free again. Perfect, okay? And so then what we'll do is we'll take our FCR tendon and then we'll retract it ulnarly, okay? Now you will see a bit of fat. This represents the dorsal aspect of the FCR tendon sheath. And so in line exactly, we take a look at where the tendon once was, and then we incise that exact location. This is going to be very, very gentle. Here we see this right now. And the reason why is you'll see the FPL or the flexor pollicis longus muscle belly lies underneath it, and we do not want to injure that structure. So again, we'll look proximally, make sure that we're all the way through and satisfied with our dissection, and then again we go distally and make sure that we're happy with exactly where we are. Perfect. So at this point, we're ready to actually expose the next layer. And so you can do this through several different ways. You can bluntly use the back edge of your sin retractor, or you can also take a finger and then sweep generously to reveal the next layer. So now we go back in, and here we can clearly see the next layer. And so Underlying right here, you'll be able to visualize, this is the pronator quadratus muscle belly. These right here are some adhesions. And with the METS, we're gonna just gently remove some of this right here. We'll take our ATSIM right now. And this fat is frequently encountered, but it's usually not like this in the cadaver. So we'll take a lap and then we'll clear off the aspect, the, the distal aspect of our pronator quadratus muscle belly. So now we have to get to the bone of the volar distal radius. So the first thing we're going to look at is the distal border. And the reason why is the joint is not very far off from the distal border of the pronator quadratus. So there's frequently, and this is sort of represented right here, you can palpate. This is the end of the distal radius bone. And so this right here is going to be the distal aspect of our incision right here. Now, your assistant radially 
is retracting the most important structure, which is the radial artery. And so you want to also palpate with your adsen the radial border of the bone. And when you do that, you take this corner. We'll again take a fresh 15 blade. We'll make a horizontal incision directly onto bone after we palpate it and we're visualizing exactly what we're doing. And that represents our horizontal incision. Again, you safely palpate with your assistant retracting the soft tissues which hold the radial artery. And then you make a longitudinal incision along this border. This right here is the first corner which we will start to gently elevate. Now, there are many different ways in which we can elevate the structure, but in this case, we're going to take an actual raspy or an elevator and then gently get underneath the pronator quadratus and try and take it in one structure. And so now we're going up this way. We're going to want to free it up radially just a bit right here. We go back to our elevator, and now you can clearly see the bowler aspect of the distal radius. At this point, we'll take thin bin homans, excuse me, just thin small homans on each side of the distal radius. We'll remove our sin retractors, like so, and now the distal radius is clearly visualized, and the most common location for these fractures is about right there. So that is the Bowler-Henry approach to fix distal radius fractures.